Hey, what's up, everybody? For Isaac Brown, I'm Mr. Zach Austin. We are 22 minutes and 40 seconds away from kickoff. You may be wondering why we're uh, starting a little bit early. We have some stuff we have to read per AAA. So we want to go ahead and read that, get that out of the way. Um, this is round one of Class 3A playoffs. You have Boomville Bearcats against the Hackett Hornets. And uh, Hackett, they come in as the sixth seed out of conference 3A1. Yes, I did say sixth seed. So I think this is probably the first time, to my knowledge, anyways, there's been a sixth seed in the Class 3A. Um, but without any further ado, here's Mr. Isaac Brown with the AAA stuff. Okay. So the schools participating in this football playoff game are members of the Arkansas Activities Association as authorized by their school boards. The administrators of the schools have helped to write the rules and regulations that govern participation of students in competitive activities for the schools that are members of the AAA. The Arkansas Activities Association, which is sponsoring this football playoff game, is volunteering voluntarily nonprofit educational association of some 500 junior and senior high public and private high schools of Arkansas. The regulations which guide these events are adopted by the schools themselves and are determined by the type of program they believe to be most desired for their school youth. The Arkansas Activity Association is one of 50 state organizations that belong to the National Federation of, high, of State High School Associations. The, this association formulates policies, game rules, and standards for the inter-school competition. The schools of Arkansas have adopted these rules on eligibility, which correspond to those recommended by the National Federation. The Arkansas Activities Association believes that athletes are taught many things in, through sports. In addition to these skills, they learn self-control, ideals of fair play and honesty, respect for authority, and for opposing players. To learn these values results in maximum benefits for his or her, her athletic experiences. Arkansas Activities Association supports good sportsmanship. All spectators have a responsibility while watching an athletic contest because their actions influence high school youth. It is important that they display the best of sportsmanship to help instill proper attitudes and ideals in these youth. The Arkansas Activities Association recognizes that athletes represent more than themselves in athletic competition. They represent their team, their fellow students, their teachers, and the community. Athletes who display good sportsmanship reflect high moral standards. So now i got to read three ads. This first one is uh, Centennial Bank is honored to be the corporate sponsor of Arkansas Activities Association State Championship Games. Congratulations to the athletes, coaches, and parents for all the hard work and the winning spirit that brought to you to the playoffs. Good luck, teams. Centennial Bank member FDIC. Farm Bureau Insurance is the official sponsor of state and regional awards for the AAA. With agencies in every county in Arkansas, make sure you check out Farm Bureau Insurance for all your insurance needs. And Big Red Stories is proud to sponsor is a proud sponsor of Arkansas High School State Championships. Big Red is a locally owned Arkansas company serving Arkansas communities. Stop by a Big Red store today and pick up your Big Red rewards card and never pay full price for gas again. Okay, now we're done. That's they never have to pay for gas again. Big red full, full price again. Oh, full price. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. Wow. So, we are 1855 away from kickoff. So, um, again, we had to make a couple announcements. Here comes the band. Um, we could probably show the band, I guess. Slide this window open. And, uh. I guess, oh, I didn't push hard enough. Whoop. My bad. All right, so here's your 2020 award-winning Boonville Bearcat Marching Band. They are under the direction of Mr. and Mrs. Brian Rhodes. Mr. Trenton Rhodes, he is your drum major. So uh, I'll hush here in just a second, and I'll let you watch the band.
And good evening, everybody. For Isaac Brown, I'm Zach Austin. We're just about 5.55 left to go here until kickoff. And this is Class 3A Round 1 of the playoffs. Um, playoffs were supposed to start last week, but with COVID and everything, uh, decided, you know, when a team cancels um, during the regular season due to COVID reasons, then everybody in that classification automatically uh, can say, hey, we want to be in the playoffs. Well, so that was the case. So last week, Hackensaw, we won in, and so they traveled down, or I say down, I should say all the way over and up to Mountain View, played Mountain View for a playing game. And uh, they went over there, played a good game, and uh, built on their lead at halftime and wound up winning 38-20 to over the Mountain View Yellow Jackets. Um, coming into the tonight's game, um, the Hackett Hornets are ranked 27 in Class 3A. They have moved up from Class 2A. They have been in Magazine's Conference past several years. Uh, but coming in, they are 5-4 and four overall and 2-4 and four in their conference. Uh, they beat Lavaca and who was the other team, Isaac? I just went blank. Mansfield, that's right. Beat Lavaca and Mansfield. That's their two conference wins. Uh, the captain for the Hackett Hornets is going to be number three, Aiden Nobles. Um, the captain for Yvonne Bearcats is going to be number six, Jacob Herrera. Uh, coming in, the Cats are number five in Class 3A, 8-2 overall, and 5-0 and in conference. Um, we are the one seed out of Conference 3A-4, and Hackett's going to be the sixth seed out of Conference 3A-1 since they beat uh, Mountain View. Mountain View would have been the five seed out of Conference 3A-2. That is Harding's conference. Um... Uh, the game we're watching tonight, if we are to win, we will play the winner of Osceola and Dollar Way. Um, so uh, we'll keep a close eye on that. Um, I know Osceola, they live stream their games. You can go to Seminole Nation, either on Facebook or YouTube. Um, looks like Hackett has won, and they have deferred. And so the Cats are going to be receiving the ball, starting the ball game. And Hackett will be kicking towards the junior high school. And we'll be returning towards the old field house. We're just a little over three minutes and 30 seconds until the kickoff. And uh, your Boonville Bearcats are making their way across the practice field up there behind the visitor stands. Um, let's see, Paris, they are at home. They play in the Salem Greyhounds. And uh, if they win, they're going to be going against either Greenland or um, Perryville. And Perryville, they traveled all the way to Greenland. I was trying to go off the top of my head real quick. Uh, Magazine is at home tonight. They are playing the Foreman Gators. Um, if they win, Magazine will go on the road next week and play Fordyce. I have I couldn't tell you who Fordyce is playing right now off the top of my head. But let's see. We'll find it real quick. They're playing Clarendon. Um, pretty sure Fordyce is number one in Class 2A. Um, it's kind of ironic. Fordyce came up here last year and had to play Magazine, and Magazine's more than likely probably going to have to travel down to Fordyce and play them again this year. Um, Mr. Gavin Kent, he has tied Gators record for P PATs. So um, the first touchdown that the Cats get, Gavin, he will go and set the school record for PATs. Um, if I have it figured correctly, that's he right now he has 145 PATs. Um, so um, if you hear Mr. Chuck, uh, both our basketball teams are 2-0, and o, correct, Chuck? That is correct. Both the boys and girls are 2-0 and in basketball, so that's pretty good. Uh, went down to Two Rivers uh, last night, Chuck was saying, I believe. And uh, Miss Carmen Kent set the rec school record for assists, so she owns that in junior high and high school, Chuck said. Who did? Lee Swint. Lee Swint. Sorry. Sorry, not Carmen. Lee Swint. So I'll get that correct. Lee Swint. She owns the assist record in junior high and high school for the girls in basketball. So... Here comes your Boonville Bearcats, led onto the field by number one, Ty Golf. 
Got Caden Shelton leading the way. Landon Shackelford and Jarrett Dirt Mitchell. Uh, got a couple freshmen out on the field tonight. Um, I don't know all the numbers. Uh, I think Mr. Matt Obar is out there. I think he's going to be number 58. And I think is it Frank the Tank is number 79. And uh, Mr. Lance Sims, where's old Lance? Number 73, our buddy Lance. He uh, helps with the huddle but since playoffs started and everything. He's down there on the field. And there's a couple other guys. I don't I think number 24, I don't know. I don't know the name for number 24. It's not on the list, so my bad. Um, Hackett, they typically like to onside kick, so wouldn't be surprised if that's what they did here. Gary Simpson, he wants to give a shout-out to Mom and Dad and shout-out to Misty and tell her to get her homework done. So, Misty, Gary says you need to get your homework done. So, back deep for the Cats is going to be Randon Ironman Ray and Brooks Herrera. And uh, the Cats are setting up for the onside kick. Number 66 is going to be kicking off for the Hornets. That's going to be Jesse Esperanza. Or number 62 will kick it, too, I think. I just had watched, yep. And it's not going to go far enough. And we will see if they make them re-kick it or just take it for the 45. So, looks like the Cats are going to take over on the Hornets' own 45-yard line. So, to start the game, the Cats already have the ball in Hornets' territory. So it looks like Mr. Caden Shelton's going to be your center. Um, number 74, Elijah Wells, is going to be your left guard. And your left tackle is going to be Lyndon Shackelford. Ray's going to be your quarterback. Richie goes in motion. He's your halfback. And it's going to be looking for Ty Goff. He's got him. It's getting pressured and pushed out of bounds by number five. That's going to be Ty Smith. Good coverage back there. He was looking for Ty Goff, but... So your right offensive side, your right guard is going to be Jarek Dirk Mitchell, and your right tackle is going to be Cole Borsma. Ty Goff is your left halfback, and Colton Ritchie, number 14, is your right halfback. Ethan Woldridge is going to be your fullback, and Iron Man Ray, I should say Brandon Iron Man Ray, is going to be your quarterback. Jacob Pereira is going to be your receiver in tight. Ritchie goes in motion. It's going to be Ray on the keeper. Randon's got the first down. Keep moving his feet. And that's going to be number 60 in there on the stop for the Hornets. And that's going to be Mason Oakle. Oakle. O-E-L-K-E. I don't know. I'll call him Mason. Uh, it's a hard name to pronounce. It's a hard name. I'll go with Mason. Looks like Chance Brashard, he checked in. At half or receiver, excuse me, will be offsides against the Hornets. So we'll back the Hornets up five yards, make it first and five. Yeah. 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 Mr. Sean Bledsaw wants to give a uh, happy birthday to his best friend, Steve Davis. Steve's birthday was Monday, the 16th. Um, so happy birthday, Steve, from your best friend, Sean Bledsaw. Ty Goff goes in motion. We ray on the keeper. He pitches over to Ty. And Ty's going to fall down. Got a flag. Hmm. Looks like Brooks Herrera's going to come in for Ty. Ty's slow getting up. Again, Ty hurt his leg against Prairieville a couple weeks ago. And trying to play through. Ties, you know, injured a couple of weeks ago. He's um, trying, he is trying to play through this, but he took a hit on on the legs, and he's going to have to come off the field. And looks like Mason Goers, your tight end, number ten, is going to come in for the Luke counts, Herrera, and Jacob Herrera is going to come out. Wendy, in. Jacob Herrera checked Got a block, Gore, blocking the back, blocking the back. Penalty is against the Cats. He'll be backed up ten yards for holding. So that's going to put our. Uh, with Ty Hurt, 
going to put our training staff, I think, to read the Pruitt down. Ronnie there. Luther says, Go Cats, One go. Of the Hackett jump off sides again. So that helps us out just a little bit. So that's going to make it, what, first and 10 now? Instead of first and 15? So it looks like Chance Bouchard is going to be split out to the right at receiver. Mason Gorsh and tight ends over here on the left-hand side. Ray is your quarterback. Richie and Brooks are area halfbacks. Ray on the keeper. Randon. And he's at the 10, 5, touchdown, Bearcats. 28 yards, Randon Ray. That's going to bring on Gavin, the Golden Leg Kent, to set the school record for PATs. I think it set somebody's car alarm off. Looks like Mr. Jacob Ferreira is going to do the Jacob holding. Hold. Kick is good. And Gavin Kent has the school record for PATs. With that point after, Gavin Kent has set a new career record for most successful points after Kent. That a boy, Gavin Kent. New school record. Gavin has set the two goals senior mark with 50 68 season in the sophomore. Welcome to 24 playoff series that year. He's got a postseason VAT record. Gavin picked 41 more PATs as a junior and with 39 so far this year. He now has 146 extra points. 146. That's a lot of PATs, Isaac. Congratulations, Gavin. Wow. That's pretty good. So back deep for the Hornets. It's going to be number two and number it's one. Gonna it's going to be eight. Elkins Gavin and Shipman. Kent. Here's his kick. Nice kick by Gavin. It's going to be filled probably about the, what, seven-yard line? And breaks a couple of tackles. Still on his feet. That's going to be uh, Elkins. And that's 32. That's going to be Cody Elliott on the stop for the Cats. So, Hackett, they like to run a spread type offense. Uh, their offensive line, I was telling Isaac, their splits are so close. They're maybe half a step, if that. I think they're actually touching. Um, you got a little bubble pass over here. A little bubble screen, you can call it. And that's going to be, was that Brooks? That was Brooks Herrera on the and tackle Brooks for the Herrera Cats. Just did a, what I call a Bailey to Bailey. So number seven, he's going to be your quarterback for the Hornets. That's going to be Ethan Slavens. Number 17 is going to be your halfback, Weston Winter. And he's... High and is intended for number two, Shipman. Um, Slavens, he's got a pretty good arm on him. Uh, throws rockets too, Isaac, watching him in warm up. Yeah, he's throwing sights pretty quick. Uh, kind of got a little weird to kind of side arm instead of more over the top, but nonetheless, it's got some zip on it. Uh, number 17, he, he runs the ball pretty hard. I was watching some of the game uh, last week when they played Mountain View, and uh, he covers the ball pretty good. And uh, just kind of down the hill runner. And pass again. He's getting some pressure from the Cats. Chase Plumel wraps him up. That's going to bring him down with the help of some others. Got some pressure there from Mr. Mason Goers and some others. And Chase Plumel wrapped him up. That's going to be fourth down for the Hornets. It's going to be fourth and 11. Got 9.57 left to go here in the first quarter. Back deep for the Cats is going to be Brooks Herrera, number seven, Chance Bouchard. I believe that is number 66, back to punt. That's going to be Esparza. Jesse Esparza. Rocky Ross back there for the Cats. And Chance Bouchard, my goodness, made me a little nervous. Still on his feet, the ball comes out. And number one, that's going to be Elkins recovering. And Elkins is going to have, or 
Elkins gets the ball for the Hackett in Boonville territory. I wanted to say Elkins Elks. Oh, well, hey, I was wrong. I'll admit I was wrong. That's good. So, Bearcat ball. Boy, I thought he had it. I won't argue it. I, I won't argue it, I guess. But, man, lucky break there for the Cats. Like I said before, if you play with a funny-shaped ball, things always bounce a little weird. That's probably, as I say, as they say over on the live stream, crazy-shaped ball, nothing is for certain. Apparently got away from Elkin and Kogi. So Mr. Jacob Pereira is going to be your receiver split out to the right. Mason Gores, your tight end, is on the right-hand side. Brooks Pereira gets the ball going to motion off on the right-hand side. Brooks, he's got to the sideline, still on his feet, a little somersault. Upended by, what number is that? 21 was over there in the area. Number four was two, Cole Ketchman. And number 21, Nate Gordon. So Brooks gets us into Hackett territory with 9.23 left to go here in the first. 7 nothing Cats over the Hornets. Ray's going to be your quarterback and Walter's your fullback. Brooks Herrera went in motion. Cats are going to reset. Richie is going to be your right halfback. Have six seconds left on the play clock. Richie goes in motion now. And it's going to be Wolger right up the middle. Ethan, it's got a first down wrapped up by Elkins. Elkins, pardon me. Mr. Joe Wickton said the Wicktons are watching at his house tonight, all the way up in northeastern Pennsylvania. Caden, Cole, and Cash say, go Cats, beat Hackett, and happy second birthday. Cash Wickton. Richie goes in motion again, and he gets the toss over here on the left-hand side. Good block by the Cats. Good job by Richie following that tunnel, and he's going to have another first down for the Cats. Race Plancett is in at the in the game at receiver for the Cats over here on the left hand side. Backfield is still the same. Brooks Herrera goes in motion now, and there's going to be Ray on the keeper. Randon gets maybe about three yards on the carry. Let's see, I think number five maybe. And 75 in there, Isaiah Carter, number five, Ty Smith on the stop for the Hornets. Mr. Chuck Alvarez, he says, good luck tonight, Bearcats. Brooks goes in motion, and it's going to be head off to Waldridge right off the middle. Touchdown, Bearcats. Ethan Waldridge, 16 yards. So that comes with 7.42 left to go here in the first. It's 13 to nothing. The Bearcats over the Hornets. Cade Smith to do the snapping. Jacob Pereira is going to be the holder. Holds good. Mr. Gavin Kent's kick is good. And that's number 147. So with 7.42 left to go here in the first quarter, 14-0. Cats over the Hornets. We'll take a little break and be right back. You're watching Bearcat Football. And we are back here at Bearcat Stadium, just right off G.J. George Drive. 7.42 left to go here in the first quarter, and the Cats are up 14-0. Uh, Mr. Ethan Wooldridge went 16 yards for the second touchdown of the night for the Cats. Good kick by Gavin, and he touched it. And he, so he's going to have to bring it out of the end. Oh, automatic touchback. 
So boy, they're gonna have the ball at the twenty. Boy, maybe. boy I'm not even race was wanting to get him, but that's gonna bring it out. So the Hornets are gonna have it at their own twenty. Uh, so if it, they do touch, it goes in the end zone. Um, got to bring it out to the twenty. So it counts as the touchback. Shotgun formation for the Hornets. Two receivers to the r left. One over here to the right. That's going to be number two going in motion. That's going to be Shipman. And he gets the ball over on the left-hand side. And he's wrapped up by Mason Gores. Holly Marsh. She's cheering, on, cheering for the Cats from Greenwood. And she says, Gary Simpson, you need to leave Misty alone. And it's going to be handoff to number 17 right up the middle. And he's going to have a first down for the Hornets. That's going to be Winter. Looks like Woldridge in there on the stop for the Cats. Um, Ty Goff, uh, Ethan Woldridge, and uh, Coach Doc Crowley have all been nominated for the uh, Class 3A um, Tosman for the Offensive Player of the Year. And I'll tell you some more after this. Pass over here to number one. That's Elkins. Got some pressure. And that was Chase Flamel finally knocked him down. Um, but Ethan Woldridge was nominated for the best 3A defensive player of the year. And Coach uh, Doc Crowley was nominated for the best uh, 3A coach of the year. Again, Ty Goff was nominated for the best offensive player of the year. Um, again, that's – they'll give those awards out later in the year. There's several uh, people that get nominated for this. Here's a snap. It's going to be handoff again to the winners right up the middle. And looks like Goers and Matson in there on the stop. Had Ross and Woldridge. I'd like to give a, a shout out to Uncle Bob. Uh, yesterday was his birthday. Um, so happy birthday, Uncle Bob. Hope it was a good one. And you're going to have offsides, a false start, I should say, against the Hornets. And that's going to back them up five. 6.07 left to go here in the first quarter. And good throw, just a little high. Who was that that popped him? Was that Welling? I think it was Welling that laid a lick on him, but that was a good throw there by Slavens. I'd like to give a shout-out to our guy David Tharp and his uh, family. Uh, thank you, man, for, for all you do, and uh, we just appreciate it. Looks like number 66 is going to be Esperanza. So Mr. Chance Bouchard and Brooks Herrera will be back deep for the Cats. Second punt of the night. And line drive. Looks like Brooks is going to get it. The Cats are going to have to field it. And Chance Bouchard gets it. And he's going to be wrapped up by Elkins. And got a flag coming in late. Is that number two? Shipman? Shipman and Elkins. Five forty seven left to go here in the first. It's fourteen nothing cats over the Hornets. The Cats have scored on both of their possessions tonight. Uh, Ray went twenty eight yards on the first one. Against the cats. What do you call it? Blocking the back? The only thing I could think of is Dove come over kinda late. And uh I mean, that's the only thing I could think of. Um, so race plants it. Looks like it's going to... Somebody's going to have to come out. There we Jacob, Jacob Pereira is coming out. Plants it's going to stay in that receiver on the right-hand side. Mason uh, Gores is going to be tied in over here on the left hand. Wolders is still your fullback. Brooks Herrera and Colton Ritchie are your halfbacks. Brooks goes in motion. He's going to hand off to Richie over here on the left-hand side. And Colton Richie heads to the sideline, up over to the 45. Cuts back, still on his feet. Colton Richie changes field, up over to the 35, 30. And he's going to be tackled, shoelace tackled down at the 20-yard line. 
I believe that was Nobles on the stop for the Hornets. Man, what was that? 50 something yard run? Where were we at? Is that the 20? Yeah. My goodness. He made me winded just watching him. So, first and 10 from the 20, Cats are in the red zone for the second time tonight. Richie goes in motion again, and it's going to be Ray right up the middle. And that's going to be number two on the stomp for the Hornets. That's going to be Shipman. Mason Gores is going to come out for the Cats, and Jacob Herrera is going to check in at receiver. So the Cats are going to have two receivers. Blancet's on the right-hand side, and Herrera's over here on the left hand. Backfield is still the same with Ray and Woldridge. Woldridge is going to be your fullback. Brooks Herrera goes in motion. It's going to be a handoff right up the middle to Woldridge. And Ethan! Looks like he's going to be short. Maybe at that. One yard line. Half an inch, maybe. Where, look at where his foot is. I say let's give it to him again. Ethan's due for a big game. 4.34 left to go here in the first. Cats are on the half inch yard line. And it's going to be Woldridge right up the middle with the dive. Touchdown, Bearcats. Ethan Woldridge. That's his second touchdown of the night. And it's 20 to 0 with 4.28 left to go here in the first quarter. It's going to bring on Gavin, the Golden Lake Kent. And sets off that person's car again. I don't know where it's at, but they got it. Snap, the hold, kick is up, and it is good. So with 4.28 left to go here in the first, 21-0, Cats over the Hornets. We'll take a little break. Bear it back. You're watching Bearcat Football. And we are back here at Bearcat Stadium, right off DJ George Drive, here at Shield Field. Mr. Gavin Kent will do the kicking off here for the Cats. Back deep for the Hornets, it's going to be Elkins and uh, Shipman. I'm sorry, that's number four. Uh, catch him, Cole catch him. High kick, and looks like we're going to have offsides against and the Cats. We have an offsides on the kickoff. So Gavin will have to kick from the 35 yard line. So we'll back us up. To the 35. The horizon leading center point, 8 to 6. Jesse Bell over Harrisburg, 14 to 6. Looks like Charleston we got some scores. On Mayflower, 14 to nothing. Lincoln leading Atkins, 16 to nothing. Lincoln is leading Atkins, 16 to nothing. That's being played at Atkins. One of the cats a little eager to get down there. There's Kent's kick again. Good kick by Gavin. That's going to be filled by number two. That's going to be Shipman. He cuts back towards the middle. And he's getting pressure by Blancet. And Chance Bouchard knocks him down about the 28-yard line. So the third possession of the night for the Hornets. Uh, moved it just a little. Um, kind of surprised they hadn't run it more with winners. Uh, done a little couple of bubble screens over here to number two, uh, Shipman. And um, got trips over here to the right, one over to the left. Slavens is going to be your quarterback. Hand off the winners right up the middle, and he's going to be stopped by Chase Plamel. Woldridge in there on the stop, and Vorsma. Give your uh, starting lineman for the Cats on the defense. You know his man looks like. It's going to be Cole Borsman, number 60. 
And your left defensive tackle, 64, Chase Plamel. And Brett Welling, 55, is your right defensive tackle. He's pressuring Slavens, rolls out to his left, and it's, ooh, tip. That was intended to number two, Shipman. And Brooks Herrera, your safety, the slides. If he was back maybe half a yard, he'd had an interception. Your linebackers, you two uh, middle linebackers, Mike and Sam, is going to be Ethan Wooldridge and Casey Manson. The outside linebackers is going to be uh, Mason Gores. He's coming off over here on the left-hand side, and it is caught by winners. There's that number 12. Mr. Hester. It's going to be a first down for the Hornets. They needed that right there. That comes with 335 left to go here in the first. Ball's on the 45-yard line of the Hornets. Trips over here to the right, one to the left. And it's going to be a handoff to Winters over here on the right-hand side. I believe that was Mr. Manson on the stomp for the Cats. Looks like Rocky Ross has checked in at nose guard. And Cole Borsma has slid over to the right defensive tackle. Looks like Kate Smith is your outside linebacker on the right-hand side. Cats shift, and the Hornets are going to jump. Chance Richard is going to be your corner over here on the left-hand side. Jacob Pereira is your corner on the right hand. Your safety is number three, Randon Ironman Ray, and number 22, Brooks Herrera. Get you some more scores here real quick. No? Ours isn't working. Chuck's is working. Back to throw, and it's caught. Kate Smith tipped it, but it was caught by number two, Shipman. And then the Hornets are in Bearcat territory. So it's going to be second and one. Third and one, I'm sorry. Slavin's going to be quarterback, and he's going to hand off the winners over on the right-hand side. He dives forward, and he's going to have the first... Well, from the guy on the other side, he's going to be a little short, but where he, he is right here, he's going to have it, I think. Nope. Yep, he's going to. Nope. I don't know what I'm saying. If you do, that's good. So, he's going to have two receivers to the left, one over here to the right. Got an H back over here. Uh, I believe that's 15, maybe Hester. Slavin's. Throws, and oh, goodness, he turned his head. He got his head turned. There's a late flag. There's a, yes. That is true. Ball is pretty much there. Let's see. This one's going to be interference against the cat. So it's going to be a new set of downs. And the Hackett Hornets going to be on the 30-yard line of the Bearcats. This is by far their best spot on the field they've been all night. Um, got 2.09 left to go here in the first. 21 nothing. Cats over the Hornets. Two receivers to each side. Winners is your halfback left uh, of Slavens. They pass over to number... There's number... Ten, no, that's number 12, Peyton Hester. I believe that was Brooks Rare on the stop. Trips over here to the right, one to the left. Winners is to the left of Slavens. The snap. A little bubble over here to Hester. That is a fumble. That's a live ball. Chance Bouchard picks it up, and that's going to be a catch ball. Oh, whatever. Umpire says it's a forward pass. Oh, man. Doc Crowley is mad. Coach Hattleball's mad. The fans are mad. That's a fumble. Where he's standing, the line of scrimmage is at the 30. Boy, Coach Crowley's letting him have it. I, I think the side judges. Well, anywho, two receivers to each side. 127 left to go here in the first. Winners is to the left of Slavens. And he's looking, getting pressure by Goers. 
That's an incomplete pass. That's intended to number one, Elkins. So that's going to be fourth down now. Right? He's got third over there, but the scoreboard says fourth. Yes, fourth down. Fourth and nine. They're going to go for it. Have a look for Hester. Hester's been about the only one that's really caught the ball tonight. Pressure by Chase Plumell. It's going to be tracked him down. I'm sorry. That is Brett Welling on the stop for the Cats. It's going to be turnover on downs, and the Bearcats are going to take over on their own. Where they got it? 27 yard line. So 113 left to go here in the first. Cats fourth force turnover on downs for the Hornets. Mr. Gores comes in. That's your tight end over here on the left hand side. Jacob Herrera is going to be your receiver on the left. Backfield is still the same with Brooks Herrera and Colton Richie, your halfbacks, and Waldridge, your fullback. Richie goes in motion. He gets the ball over here on the left hand side. Good block there by Brooks. And he's going to be wrapped up, though, by Hester. Charleston is up 20 to nothing over Mayflower. And Paris is, and Salem's tied 13-13. Kind of surprised on that. Ozark and Ashdown are 0-0. Poyan is up 14-6 over Dirks. And Magazine's up 8-6 over Foreman. Hoxie's up 28 to nothing over uh, Lake Village Lakeside. Brooks goes in motion. It's going to be Randy Ray on the keeper on the right-hand side. That was number 21 on the stop, uh, Nate Gordon. 25 seconds left to go in the first quarter, and that's going to be the last play of the first quarter unless the cast decide to uh, run one here real quick. Uh, Yellville Summit is up 22-17, and they are going to run another play. Eight seconds left. And it's going to be hand off to Brooks Herrera on the right-hand side. Brooks has got the first down. Stutter step makes the guy miss. And he's drove out of bounds. That was the very last play of the quarter. I didn't see who pushed him out. But at the end of one, your Bumble Bearcats, 21. Hackett Hornets, zero. For Isaac Brown, I'm Zach Austin. You're watching Bearcat Football. We were back here at Bearcat Stadium. Car alarm going off again. It was Channel 5s. So I don't know if there was the if there was the car that's going off the whole time the cannon was going off. I have no idea. Anyways, looks like they're leaving. Um, started the second quarter. It's 21-0. Cats over the Hornets. The Cats are on their own 45-yard line. Ray's going to be your quarterback. Waldridge is your fullback. Richie and Brooks Herrera are your halfbacks. Everybody in tight. Looks like. Chance Bouchard is in our receiver, and it's going to be keeper. Pitch over to Brooks, and he's wrapped up by number two, Shipman. I guess Drew Central canceled their game with uh, Prescott, and so Prescott and Harding both move on to the second round of the playoffs. Um... Prescott and Harding both had a, a bye week anyways, but uh, Smackover and Drew Central both opted in like Hackett um, to do play-ins, but they both went ahead and canceled, so uh, they don't have a game. And busted play, and Randon Ray is able to make something out. Still on his feet! And Winters on the bottom, number 17, and number one, Elkins on the bottom as well for the Hornets. 
I don't know how in the world he done that, but man, he's like Houdini sometimes. Race Plancet's going to split out to the left, and Chance Bouchard's over here split out to the right. Your backfield's still the same, and Ray comes up under center. Ray under center. Richie goes in motion. It's going to be handoff to Walter. Right up. Nope, I'm sorry. He kept it. Ray kept it, and he's going to be short of the first down where that far dude is, but where he is, he's got the first down. So short and by the nose of the football is what we got. 10-12 left to go here until halftime. It's fourth and one. First fourth down, the Cats are going to go for it. First fourth down of the night for the Cats. Uh, if I can remember correctly. Ray up under center. Richie goes in motion. It's going to be Woldridge on the handoff. And he's going to have the first down for the Cats. Number three on the stop. That's going to be Nobles. Brooks Herrera goes in motion. He gets the toss over here on the right hand side. Brooks is staying behind his block. Still on his feet. And we number 66. Uh, Esparza. Esparza, excuse me. So second and ten, 921 left to go until halftime. Jacob Pereira is in at uh, receiver now. Mason goes as you tied in on the left hand side. Backfield still the same. Brooks goes in motion. Gonna be handoff to Colton on the left hand side. Richie still on his feet. And he's taken back uh, down. Excuse me. I'll spit it out here in a second. Uh, it's number one, Elkins, Elkins off the coming off the bottom. So be third and two with nine minutes and two seconds left to go until halftime. Cats are taking their time. Ray comes up under center now. Richie goes in motion, and it's going to be Ray on the keeper on the left-hand side. Ray's got the first down spin move. Looks like number 60 there on the stop, Mason. Again, that's Mason Oki. I'm just going with Mason, y'all. Okay, y'all just got to deal with it, honestly. <laughs> um, so 8.25 left to go here in the second as Ray did a little spin move. That's a the circle button on your PlayStation players and what, square? B? B button. Xbox. Oh, tripped up by his own guy. Be a loss of what, about three or four? Wow, Bismarck is up seven to nothing over McGee. On top of oh, okay. I was about to say. I was fixing to give y'all a basketball score, but. Man. Jacob Perez split out to the left. Richie goes in motion. And he cuts back over here on the right hand side. Ray does. Brandon Ironman Ray. He's got one guy to be. Touchdown, Bearcats. 29 yards. Brandon Ray. That comes with 731 left to go until halftime. And it's 27 to nothing. 29 yards and a touchdown. 27 nothing, Bearcats. Clever play drawn up by Doc Crowley. Kent on for the point after. Mr. Gavin Kent. Yeah, that was kind of like a quarterback counter, I guess you could say. Um... Cats do that some, but not, not really much. Um, the Hornets have been doing a pretty good job tackling our halfbacks. 
And the kick is up, and it is good. So a 7.31 left to go until halftime. It's 28 to nothing. Counts over the Hornets. We'll take a little break and be right back. You're watching Bearcat Football. And we are back here at Bearcat Stadium, and uh, we'll get you the Osceola Dollarway score real quick. Um, yeah, they're doing an ad. We pulled it up on YouTube. Not going to lie. Again, the winner of this game plays the winner of Osceola and Dollarway, and it's tied 0-0 with, what is that, 42 seconds left to go? First quarter. First quarter? 48. High kick. Almost dropped it. That's going to be, who's that, Elkins? And Rocky Ross. Brings him down. Oh, 6 0. Sorry. OCL is up 6 to nothing over Dollarway. Looks like that's being played at Dollarway. Yeah. No. I was thinking OCL was the home team on that, though. Do what? No, they were both uh, three seeds, though. I'll bring it up here in a second. Got two receivers over here to the left, one to the right. That's going to be number one, Elkins. Or, yes, Elkins, he's intended for. Uh, Slavens, he targeted Elkins uh, early in the game last week against Mountain View. Bring up my pictures here. Uh oh. If you wonder why I said, oh, it kind of looked like there was fixing to be a five OCL and dollar way. Still trying to find. There's my pitcher. Wooldridge on the stop for the Cats. That's going to be Winters on the carry. He gets about, what, four yards there? Okay, no, I was wrong. Dollarway was the home team on that one. So, that's my bad. Yeah, yeah, they're at Dollarway. Got two receivers to each side. It's going to be handed off to Winters right up the middle. And he's going to be met by Matson and Wooldridge. Kate Smith comes in and helps finish it off. I'm sorry, that's Goers in there. So it's going to be, what, fourth and, and two? Two receivers to each side. And Slavens, he's wanting the ball. Hard count, looks like. He almost got, who is that? Is that Borsma over there? Cats are in a forefront. And Winters has got the first down. Looks like Wooldridge and Brooks Herrera on the stop for the Cats. That was Goers that almost jumped. Yeah, that was Goers. He's on the far side. And it's going to be handoff to Winters on the right hand side. He spins and gets about two yards. So Paris and Salem are still tied 13 to 13. That's into the first. Paris and Salem are tied at 13 into the first quarter. At Eagle Stadium in Paris. Two receivers to each side. Winters is to the left of Slavens. He gets the ball right up the middle, and he's met by Casey Matson. Got some jawing going on there with Matson and uh, Winters. Foreman is up 12 to 8 over Magazine. That's being played at Magazine. Prairie Grove is up. Well. The live button's in front of the Prairie Grove and the Blyville score. Prairie Grove has 14. I can't see. Let's see. We'll click on it real quick. Uh, Prairie Grove is up 14-13 over Blyville and Chickasaws. And is he tended to Elkins. Overthrown again. 
I'll tell you, Slavens, he's got a pretty good arm on him. Uh, looks like Plumel was in the backfield for the Cats. 4.55 left to go until halftime. It's fourth and eight. 28 to nothing. Oh, Salem has scored. It's 2013 Salem over Paris. And low pass. That was caught, though, by number two, Shipman. Oh, they say incomplete. Good coverage there by Jacob Pereira. And the Cats are going to take over on downs again. No. I thought he had caught it. But he said it was... It's like Ray Splinton, this receiver here, over here on the right-hand side. Jacob Pereira's receiver on the left hand. Backfield still the same. And it's passed over here to Jacob Pereira. And he's made, still on his feet, almost made a guy miss. Shoelace tackle there by Elkins. You don't see that very much by the Cats. A little old quick swing. Or bubble, whatever you want to call it, I guess. It's more of a swing pass. So it will be second and two. 4.27 left to go until halftime. It's 28 nothing Cats over the Hornets. Takes Arcana is up 13-7 to seven over Morrison. First down for the Cats. Winner's on the stop. Or winner. Winter. Speaking of winter, it's getting close to winter. But not quite yet. Brooks goes in motion. Cats are going to reset. Blancet and Herrera are split in tight, your receivers. 3.55 left to go here in the second. Richie goes in motion now, and it's going to be a pass. He's got him. If he can just get a pass away, and it's going to be intercepted by Elkins. And ball comes out, and doggone. Number 17, winner on the uh, recovery there. It's kind of an ill-advised pass, I would you say. Yeah, you can't, you can't be throwing it under dress like that. Pretty sure he kind of threw off his back foot as well. So, 3:44 left to go until halftime. It's 28 to nothing. Two receivers to each side for the Hornets. Slavens is going to be your halfback. Winter is your, or Slavens is your quarterback. Excuse me, Winter is your halfback. And it's caught by Shipman. He's going to have the first down, little slant route. Got a flag come in late, and probably going to be a face mask. Would be my guess. Doc Crowley has both hands behind his Yeah, head. Coach Doc Crowley, he's not very happy. I believe this one's going to go against the Bearcats. They are still talking it over at about the 42-yard line. And it will be stepped off 15 yards against the Cats. Targeting, yeah. That's what I thought. No, a targeting call. Targeting. I guess that's against Mr. Jacob Pereira. Let's go back and watch it. I'll bring it up on my phone. And the Hornets are in Bearcat territory. Handed to Winter. Looks like Mr. Brett Welling on the stop for the Cats. Looks like Shackelford comes in for Plymel. Two receivers to each side. A little bubble screen over here. And he's pushed out of bounds by Jacob Pereira. Hit more than three minutes left in the First half, 28 nothing cats, but the Two receivers to each side. 
And no, Felipe was expecting that, but he did manage to get I thought I heard a whistle. Did I hear a whistle? And complete. Oh. Anyways, Richie and Woldridge on the stop for the Cats. So it's going to be fourth down for the Hackett Hornets. Looks like 75 is going to come off. Carter and is that 68 came in. Uh, Tyler Pittman. Two receivers to each side. Winters to the left of Slavens. Low snap. And Richie comes with pressure, and it's in the air. Oh, man. Got another flag. Oh, come on. He's pointing to Jacob. Is there a flag down as well? Yeah. There is a flag on the flag. So the pass interference against the Cats, just so you know that targeting call, Jacob tapped him on the head with his hand. With, I mean, with his hand. So, I mean, I can go back and watch it if you want, but that's what I did. Anywho, now it's a couple plays to go. We'll get over it. And I don't agree with this, but anywho, we'll get past this as well. 2.23 left to go here in the second quarter. Two receivers to each side. Slavens is the quarterback. He's going to want to throw it over here. It's intended for uh, Shipman. Herrera on the stop. Jacob Herrera, I should say. Two receivers to each side. Winner is to the right of Slavens this time. And he's going to get the handoff right up the middle. And he's going to be stopped. Chase, oh, I'm sorry. Shackelford on the stop and Waldridge. 150 left to go here until halftime. Number four is going to come in for the Hornets. Cole Ketchman and Slavens is going to come out. Official timeout. I think he's, he's talking to Winter. Uh, I don't know what that was about, but anywho. It was anywho. Uh, Ethan Slavens that went off, so apparently Cole Ketchum is going to be uh, the new quarter, a quarterback. 128 left to go here uh, until halftime. Kind of Pistol formation. formation. It's going to be handoff right up the middle, the middle to winners. And, it looks like he might have, it looks like he's and he's going to be close to the first down. Cole Borsma is going to come in for the Cats. So at halftime, Osceola is up six to nothing over Dollar Way. Osceola leading Dollar Way six to nothing, and so we're going to have. Are we going to have a measurement, or what are we going to have here? It looks like a fourth. He's looking at what hat. Now he's going to measure. Yes, we are going to have a. Charleston is up 28 to nothing over Mayflower, and Paris and Salem are tied 20 to 20 in the second quarter. I don't know. Melbourne and Cedarville have gone to half with the Melbourne Bearcats ahead 14 to nothing. Charleston 28, Mayflower 0. First down for the Hackett Hornets. And I should have said this while I go, but they're in the red zone for the first time tonight. And Hackett does get the first down at the 13. So line. ball is on the, what is that, 13? Slavens is back in at quarterback now for Hackett. Elkins comes in. He's just the lone man on the right-hand side. Shipman is going to be in the backfield. He's to the right of Slavens, and Winter is to the left of him. Two receivers over here to the left. Both of those are going to be the Hester boys. And it's going to be handoff to Shipman right up the middle. There ain't nobody there. He's got daylight, and the ref gets knocked down. And a good game for Fisher Shipman of Hackett. Good job by... Uh, Shipman there. I don't know who stopped, but I think Waldridge helped the, the ref up. Same formation for the for the Hornets. The snap, and it's going to be winners, and he's going to be stopped. Looks like Mr. Ritchie in there on the stop. 35 seconds left to go 
until halftime. We've got a timeout. Hackett, that's their first timeout in the first half. So with 34 seconds left to go until halftime, 28 nothing. Cats over the Hornets. We'll take a little break and be right back. You're watching Bearcat Football. We are back here at Bearcat Stadium. It's right off DJ George Drive. Shield field. 34 seconds left till halftime. The Hornets are on the three yard line. This is the first time they are in the red zone tonight. Same formation for them. Winters and Shipman in the backfield. Shipman gets the ball, and Brett Welling gets even with the help of Mr. Cade Smith. And he's all, no, sir, not today. 25 seconds left to, or 26 seconds left to go until halftime. Hackett's going to take a timeout. They got two timeouts. I'm sorry, that's their second one. They got one timeout left. Cats have all three of their timeouts uh, remaining. So for Isaac Brown, I'm Zach Austin. Um, I'll give you some scores real quick. Charleston is up 35 to nothing over Mayflower uh, in the 7A classification. Bentonville's up 21 to 10 over Cabot. Poyan's up 28 to 6. Over Dirks and Foreman is still up 12 to 8 over Magazine. Hoxie's up 35 to 6 over Lake Village Lakeside. Let's see, that's all the scores we got. Um, we normally get scores off Fearless. Um, we can't get that to work. We're coming, we're getting our stuff off of the AAA website. And uh, again, Osceola and Dollarways at halftime. Osceola is up 6 to nothing. The winner of this game plays the winner of that game. Same formation for the Hornets, excuse me. And Slavin's on the keeper. Extra effort. Let's see if he gets in. He's going to be short. He's going to be timeout with 16 seconds left to go. That's the final timeout for the Hornets. And he's going to, where's the ball? Ball's right at the one-yard line. I'd like to take this time to thank our administration. Uh, thank Coach Walker, uh, Mr. Pierce, Coach Goff. Um, and just everybody that helped uh, get this going. Um, Ozark is on, finally on the board, seven to nothing. Ozark over Ashdown. Um, but I, I just want to thank of all of our school administration. Uh, if you see them out and about, tell them thank you, because uh, without them and without y'all, we wouldn't be able to do this. Um, we enjoy doing this. Uh, it's fun. Let's see how many people we got viewing now. 389. That's not too bad. Must be. And here we go. Fourth and one from the one. 16 seconds left to go. Looks like we got a pistol formation. Hester, number 12, is going to be in the backfield. It's going to be a quarterback keeper right up the middle, and it is. He's going to be short. And that defense stands tall. Talk about a stone wall. That's coming off the face of the Giants. Bearcat defense comes up big. The big guys up front. Shackelford, Mason Gores, Colton Reed, Richie, uh, Ethan Waldridge in there. Wow. Casey Matson. Richie in there too, and Boomble Hulk, the Hornets at the half. All right. Let's see. Uh, who was it? Is it Holcomb has the longest run at Bearcat Stadium? I don't remember. Timeout by the Cats. Let's see what we're going to do here. You're going to have to do something. So, we'll take a little break. We'll be right back. You're watching Bearcat Football.
We're back here at Bearcat Stadium. Ball is on the one yard line. Ten seconds left to go. Hurry, snap the ball. He's still ain't on. The, he's on the field. Randon right up the middle. That's probably about what a six yard run. That's going to be the final play of the first half. So. At the end of two, your Bumble Bearcats lead 28 to nothing over the Hackett Hornets. We'll take a little break. We'll be right back. We'll let you enjoy your halftime show. For Isaac Brown, I'm Zach Austin. You're watching Bearcat Football. I'm not sure if this song is copyrighted, so I'm going to put my headset back up. So that's why y'all really hadn't been hearing nothing. Um, we just don't want to get stuff copyrighted but at your Hackett um, cheerleaders.
Here's your 2020 award-winning Boonville Bearcat marching band. We'll slide this window open. I'll try not to hit the camera this time. There we go. And uh, we're going to put it to where um, where it's playing off the camera. So we'll have the camera on, picking Ladies up the sound. And, uh, and uh, we'll have to mute it for Boonville God Bless the USA because it is copyrighted. So, the last song right after uh, uh, Trenton plays Taps, uh, we'll mute it. Drum Major Trenton Rose, is your band ready? You may take the field for halftime entertainment.
raised record from 28 nothing Bearcats. They held Hackett inside the one yard line late in the first half. Talk about some other sports. Basketball got played in the this And we started off in May. And now we invite you to rise and join us as we face our flag and respectfully honor all those who courageously sacrificed for the freedoms we enjoy. Tonight, for the Lady Cats and one of their members, it was the first win that the Lady Cats picked up against two rivers. And it was by the score of 66 to 31, so a mercy rule win, the first time they've beaten the Lady Gators in 11 tries. And last night, sophomore Lee Swint goes into the record books, becoming the very first Lady Cat to go into double figures and assists for one game. She had 10 assists. I'm going to take a short pause. I'm not going to throw it back in the studio, but I'm going to take a short pause for a second. To that game and a lot of those assists went to Heaven Sanchez. Heaven scored 24 points in the first half, ended up with 30 for the game.
We are back here at Bearcat Stadium. Um, Osceola is still up six to nothing over Dollarway. Uh, Osceola is driving though. Um, we are watching it. Um, game is being played at Dollarway. Um, got some other scores for you though. McGee is up 14 to seven at halftime over Bismarck. Glen Rose is up 27 to 14 over West Fork. That's at halftime. And Pigott is up 24 to six over Camden Harmony Grove. That's also at halftime. Harrisburg, Harrisburg is up 32 to 30 with 26 seconds left. And Lincoln is up 24 to six over Atkins. Uh, at halftime, center point is up 21 to 14 over Rosin. And Charleston is up 35 nothing at halftime over Mayflower. Um, try to get you some stats real quick. Cats are making their way onto the field. They're on the practice field right now. Uh, coming this way. Let's see. Here we go. Well, I didn't put my hat back on. I'll put it on in a second. I know y'all wanted to know that, but that's, you know, a little tidbit of, I don't know, exact information, I guess. Oops. All right. So some stats. Uh, Hackett has 38 plays for a total of 108 yards, 12 minutes and 35 seconds time of possession, 46 um, yards on the ground and 18 through the air. Or, or not 18, 16, or dear heavens, 10 of 18 for 62 yards through the air. Uh, they have nine first downs, and uh, let me go walk this way. Uh, they are 311 on third down and 205 on fourth down. They have four penalties for 20 yards and two punts for 31. Uh, the Rumble Bearcats has 28 plays for 269 yards with 11 minutes and 15 seconds time of possession. Uh, the Cats have 26 carries for 261 yards, one of two passing for eight yards. The Cats have one turnover, have 15 first downs. We are uh, three of three on uh, third down and one of one on fourth down. Have six penalties for 70 yards. Uh, no punts. Ethan Slavens is 10 of 18 for 62 yards for Hackett. The leading rusher for the Hornets is going to be Winter. Uh, 14 carries for 31 yards, followed by Slavens with 15 yards. And Shipman has one for no yards. The leading receiver is going to be Fisher Shipman. Six receptions for 42 yards. Uh, number 12, Peyton Hester has two for 17 yards. And Elkins, number one, has one uh, catch for four yards. And number... It says on here number 88, Logan Slavens has one for negative one yards. The leading tackler for the Hackett Hornets is going to be number two, uh, Shipman. Four and a half tackles. Uh, Elkins has three tackles. Peyton Hester has two and a half tackles. And Weston Winter has two and a half tackles as well. Uh, Esparza has two tackles as well as Ty Smith. For your Mobile Bearcats, uh, Randy Ray, Ray, excuse me, one or two passing for eight yards. He also has 11 carries for 113 yards and two touchdowns. Uh, Colton Ritchie has four carries for 76 yards. Ethan Wooldridge has six carries for 49 yards and two touchdowns. And Brooks Herrera has five carries for 23 yards. Jacob Herrera is the lone man uh, to catch the ball tonight. He has one reception for eight yards. The leading tacklers for your Mobile Bearcats, it's gonna be number 20, Ethan Wooldridge. He has four and a half tackles, as well as number 11, Casey Manson. They both have four and a half tackles. Jacob Pereira has three and a half tackles. Chase Plumel has three tackles. Brooks Herrera has uh, two and a half. And Mason Goers and Brett Welling both have two apiece. And again, um, Gavin Kent, he did uh, set the school PAT record um, earlier. He has uh, 149 PATs. And here come your Boomville Bearcats. We will be kicking off the Hackett Hornets deferred in the first half, so we'll be kicking towards the junior high. Hear that car alarm again, so it must not have been the 5 News vehicle. And if 
you're wondering why I keep telling you that, hey, I'm hearing it. I'm going to let you know about it. And, yep, that's just what, how we do stuff. Right, Isaac? I suppose. <laughs> Anywho, back deep for the Hackett Hornets. It's going to be number one, Elkins, and number two, Shipman. Mr. Gavin Kent is going to be doing the kicking for the Cats. And uh, I'll give you the guys out there on the kick team, kickoff team. Uh, starting over here on this side, number four is going to be Rocky Ross, sevens, Chance Bouchard, followed by Peyton Tatum, Landon Shackelford, and uh, Trace Hall. You have Tate and Ross, Brendan Dove, Race Blancet, Brooks Herrera, and Cody Elliott on the far side over there. That is filled by Shipman. He cuts up on the right-hand side, and he's pushed out of bounds by Cody Elliott. And, hey, where's the flag for that? They got a little mad because Cody tackled him and went out of bounds, and he went ahead and fell, and I don't know who shoved Cody. And Coach Michael Metters is mad over there. Let's see. They're still talking about it over there. Unsportsmanlike. Yep. I knew it. I called it. Offsetting. I think Cody's momentum kind of helped carry him out of bounds. I could be wrong, but that's just my own personal opinion. I mean... He's not happy on this side of the field. So he's getting an explanation from getting the official. The Meanwhile, Hackett's going to line up two wide to the far side and one wide to this side. It's going to be Logan Flavins on this side. Oh, goodness. That's the Jeopardy theme song, right? That's why I kind of snickered. Let's see. Is that Coach Crowley and is that Coach Omer, too? They're both out on the Well, they're both mad, I think. Well, with that, got 11.56 left to go here in the third. It's 28 nothing Cats over the Hornets. Going to have two receivers to each side. Slavens is still your quarterback. And that is not Winter there in the backfield. That's number... That's going to be intended for Hester, and it's thrown behind him. I believe that was 15. Um, that's going to be Scholar. Oh, that's the Boomer Bearcats. Scholar Shelton don't play for the Hackett Hornets. <laughs> We're 15. That's uh, Kogan Hester. Two backfield or two guys in the backfield. Winners to the left of Slavens and Shipman's to the right. Two receivers over here. On, and now Shipman goes in motion. Won't be surprised to see the little bubble. That's what they've done all night. And incomplete. That one was a forward pass. The other one other earlier was not. He's just making sure. But, yeah, good job by Brooks, though, making sure. It's better to be safe than sorry, you know. So. Well, we got a chop block against Hackett, so let's go back and what, 10? That kind of reminded me throwing it back to when Magazine played in the state championship. Oh, Shelby Radzell scooped and scored. 15-yard um, penalty, sorry. Two receivers to each side. Winter is to the left of Slavens. The snap. And got a slant wrap there. And good hit by Jacob Herrera. Man, man, that's a good hit. Honestly, I was waiting for a flag. I was surprised he held on to that. Yeah, I, I was too. It was a little high. That was Shipman on the on the catch there. 
and Shipman managed to hold on to the ball. Third down. Third and third and third and third and third. The Hornets. Great play by Shipman there. Great play on Same the Same formation for the, the Hornets. Bearcats shift. And pass over here to Shipman again. And Richie and Wooldridge on the stop. And Jacob Pereira comes in. Helps finishes it off. Eleven oh five left to go here in the third quarter, and it's fourth down already for the Hackett Hornets. Fourth and seven. Let's see, looks like they're going to go for it. Ball's on the twenty-eight yard line. Their own 20, 28, Excuse me. Same formation. There's the snap. Getting some pressure and getting Cole and Cole Borsma and throws, and it's going to be incomplete. That's intended for winner. He would have had the first down, but it looks like Welling was over in the area. The two receivers on the near side were just standing there. They weren't doing anything. Although, I mean, I don't know why you do that. I mean, if you ever see your kid, your quarterback roll out, kids, if you're a receiver, go get open. I mean, man, start hollering at him. Go where he's at. Let him know where you're at. But, anywho, that's my little two cents of Zach's. I don't know, tidbit knowledge, I guess. <laughs> 10.38 left to go here in the third. It's 28-0, and the Cats are on the 28-yard line of the Hornets. Ray is your quarterback, and Brooks Herrera goes in motion. It'll be Ray on the keeper, still on his feet. Randon cuts up the middle. A little juke move. Randon, Iron Man, Ray, touchdown. Bearcats got a late flag. That's going to come back. Well, that was real late. Holding. Okay, so touchdown's going to stand. Unsportsmanlike against Hackett. But the, the, the back judge, your safety, whatever, I forget what he's called. I don't remember what all the... He was saying the Holden, the one that called the the targeting on Jacob, he's the one that said it was holding, but he's not the head ref. Let's see. The head ref, I think he's the umpire, or the guys by the linebackers, the umpire. you got your shot judges, then your back judge. Trying back to remember my sports officiating class. That's been a couple years ago. Anywho, while they're talking and discussing Coach Metters over there, uh, we'll take a little break. Be right back. You're watching Bearcat Football. And we are back here at Bearcat Stadium, just right off DJ George Drive. And um, Coach Mender's over there is getting an explanation from the white hat and the side judge. Um, they called an unsportsmanlike penalty against Hackett. It was a late flag. We was thinking it was against the counts of holding because the the back judge. Yeah, he was giving the holding. He was giving the holding sign as he's walking off talking to one of the other officials. And then the white hat gives unsportsmanlike. Yeah. So... Your guess is as good as mine. Yeah. I'm supposed to give a shout out to uh, Jennifer Buckner. She's probably the only one I'll ever do. <laughs> but, yeah. They're going to force it on the kickoff. Be on the kickoff. So, 15 yard penalty. The Cats will be kicking from the 35. They'll be kicking off from what? The 50? Right? Kick it. Oh. Don't go on it. No good. So 34 nothing with 10.29 left to go here in the third. So the Council have to score again to have the mercy rule in effect. Right. 
Let's see here. Yeah, looking up. So your referees, your white hat, and then you have your side judges or line judge. The umpire is the one that's by the linebackers and the back judge, just this dude right here at the 50 on the Bearcat. And then this guy, the, the field judge, that would be my guess. And the other two guys are your side judges and then your white hat, which is the referee. Yep. That's what we're going with. That's what we looked up. Back here at Bearcat Stadium after the touchdown from wow. Shallow's up. Oops, that. I think it's 32 With the unsportsmanlike conduct penalty on yep. 32-6. Shallow Daddy is up over uh, the DeWitt Dragons. So the Cats will be kicking off from the 14-0 Osceola over Darla Way. That is in the fourth. Start of the fourth. Looks like we're going to do an onside kick. Kicking off from the 45-yard line. They're on 45. Why not? And plus, need to get up on the mercy rule. Get the mercy rule in effect, excuse me. That way you get a running clock. High kick. Fair caught by number 60. That's going to be Mason. That's Mason Oakey. First and 10 for the Hornets. Charleston is up 38 to nothing. Charleston has kicked the field goal. Charleston has the field goal there up on Mayflower. 38 to nothing, so the Tigers will advance to the next round. Ozarks up 14 nothing over Ashdown. And then Paris is up 26 to 20 over Salem. Mag Magazine was up at halftime 15 to 14, but Foreman's gone back up in the third. It's 22 15 Foreman over Magazine. Toss over to the number two. That's going to be Shipman, and he's wrapped up by Ray. That's about a three yard loss. That's good open field tackle. Yes. Yeah, if he was able to get around Ray, he could have at least got back to the line of scrimmage, probably. Or the original line of scrimmage, I should say. Yeah, Oxy's up 49-14, to 14, and Stuttgart is up 23-14 over Hamburg. That's Class 4A. Got trips over to the right. Got some pressure coming from the Cats, and it's intended to Shipman. He wasn't even... He wasn't ready for it. He was still going downfield. Yeah, I think he had a different route in mind. I think so. You got two receivers over here on the left hand, one over there on the right. That's going to be Elkins on the far side. Winters is to the left of Slavens, and that's going to be Shipman going in motion. A little fake to him, with a, and he's wide open. Good pop by Cade Smith, but he's able to get away, and Ethan Waldridge is able... Oh, I'm sorry, that's Mason Goers. No. Third time's the charm. It's Casey Matson. Good call, though, there by Hackett. Um, every time they sent Shipman in motion, they've done that little bubble uh, or swing pass over here to him. And did a little halfback screen off of that. So it's fourth down, fourth and nine from their own 30. 939 left to go here in the third. Two receivers to each side. Winner is to the left of Slavens. And here comes the Cats with the pressure. Quick pass. And he's got the first down, got another flag. And the back judge comes in late with another flag. And that's what I'm afraid of. Coach Doc Crowley is, is frustrated. We'll see what they call. I could see maybe a pass interference because Jacob was kind of all over him, but... I mean, he reached around... Anyways, we'll see. Down in Pine Bluff. This penalty will go against the Cats. Probably. I would, who is that? I had to be on Ray. Not familiar with the ramifications of the targeting So they both have one. Ray and. Good job there by Matson. And Ray. And down at the 24 yard line, Fisher Shipman. Good catch there by Shipman. 
Cats are a little fired up now, targeting. Um, they both have one, Ray and uh, Jacob Pereira. If they get another one, they'll be kicked out. Um, the rest of this game in the, should be the first half of the next game. Isaac's looking that up real quick to make sure. And Slavin's throwing in. It's going to be incomplete. Good job by Ray to bat it away. Okay. Alright, he's still looking. Two receivers each side. Slavin's is looking. Pressure by Kate Smith. And Ray. Good job by Randon Ray to tip it away. And man, I was kind of hoping he'd intercept it. But. So it'll be third and ten. Ball's on the 24 yard line of the Bearcats with 9.09 left to go here in the third. It is 20, or sorry, not 28 nothing. It's 34 nothing. 34 nothing Bearcats. Cats have to score again to get the mercy rule. And the Hornets need to score to make sure the Cats, the Cats can kick a field goal, but the Hornets score, the Cats will have to score a touchdown. What we got? Timeout by the Cats. So with 9 on 9 left to go here in the third, it's 34 nothing. We'll take a little break and bear it back. You're watching Bearcat Football. We're back here at Bearcat Stadium. Two receiver seat sides for the Hornets. It's going to be handoff to Winters right up the middle. Looks like Welling on the stop for the Cats and Manson. And that was Winter, not Winters. Yes. I know some of you are probably saying it's Winter, not Winters. I know. Just, yeah, I don't know. Two receivers to each side. Winter is to the left of Slavens. He is looking pressure from the Cats. And it's high intended for uh, number two. I believe that's Shipman. And Chance Bouchard there on the cover. It's going to be turnover on downs. And the Cats are going to take over on their own 20. Isaac's still looking on the target First and everything. and 10 at the 20 yard line for the Bearcats. And we were getting, we're getting Peyton Tatum in at quarterback. Looks like Peyton Tatum's in at quarterback now. Uh, Brooks Herrera and, and Colton Ritchie are your halfbacks. Ethan Wolders is still your fullback. Ritchie goes in motion. It's going to be hand off to Wolders right off the middle. Ethan rolls over a dude. I say rolls over. Lowers his shoulder. Let's see, who is that on the stop? Was that uh, Elkins on the stop? Wolders comes out, and Manson's going to come in at fullback now. Ray Splanson's going to be a receiver on the right hand side. Jacob Pereira's a receiver on the left hand. Tatum balls on the ground. Luckily, he's able to get on that. Uh, that's been a couple issues with um, when PT has come in, Peyton Tatum. Uh, I've had a little issues with the center QB exchange. Uh, again, he is in for Ray at quarterback. Uh, Casey Manson is in at fullback for Ethan Woldridge. Uh, Richie is your right halfback, and Brooks Rare is your left halfback. Uh, Shelton is still your center. Elijah Wells and Landon Shackelford are your, on your left side. And it's Manson right up the middle. And he's going to be close. 
Nope, it's going to be a first down, Bearcats. The guys over here on the right side of the line um, is going to be, here comes Goers. He's going to be your tight end, but um, Mr. Jarrett Dirk Mitchell and Cole Borsman is over here on the right side, your right guard and tackle. And Goers is going to be your tight end on the right-hand side. So first and ten. Jacob Pereira is going to be your receiver out to the left. Again, Matson is your fullback. Brooks Herrera goes in motion. It's going to be loose football. And I loose football. Well, let's see. Let's see. There was a scrap between the Hackett player and Cole. The, the it's going to be Hackett ball, and I think Winter come up with it. Looks like you have trips to the right, one over here to the left. Winter is going to be your halfback next to Slavin. He gets the ball on the right-hand side, still on his feet, and Welling just jumps on him. Looks like he had Ethan Wooldridge in there on the stop from the linebacker position. Wooldridge, Rocky Wallace, I'm in on the tackle. They can head off to Winters again on the right-hand side. Here comes Goers in for the Cats. Coming off the bottom of pile again. That's going to be Wooldridge. And I think Rocky Ross was in there on the stop. Uh, Osceola is still up 14-0 over Dollarway with 6-10 left to go in the fourth quarter. Uh, the winner of that game plays the winner of this game. Two receivers to each side. Slavin is your quarterback, and he's looking. Pass over here to Hester. And let's see. Sheds a tackle. Still on his feet. And finally uh, tackled out of bounds with, by Wooldridge and Smith. Borsma was over there as well. And that's a first down for the Hornets. Hmm. Got trips to the right, one over here to the left. Shipman is the lone man over here on the left-hand side. It's going to be winner right up the middle. Looks like Willing in there, and Matson was in the area. Slavens intended for a Shipman. I went blank on his name for a second. A little slant route, though. Slant route there, though. 5:34 left to go here in the third. It's 34 nothing. Cats over the Hornets. 34 nothing. Bearcats lead. Hornets are again in the Boonville Red Zone. 5:34 left third quarter. Foreman is up 28 to 15 over Magazine. Again, I don't know what quarter that is. Pass, and it's going to be incomplete. Intended for Shipman again. Third. So it's 28-15 in the third quarter, Foreman over Magazine. Hopefully the Rattlers will be able to pull that one out. The winner of that game plays the winner of um, Clarendon and Fordyce. Excuse me. So it's fourth down for the Hornets. They are on the 13-yard line of the Cats. Trips to the right. And he's kind of got all day. And he's got a guy wide open. Just threw it right behind number 12, Peyton Hester. Boy, he would have had a touchdown, too. Oh, man. So, luckily, the Cats will take over on downs again. With 5.24 left to go here in the third, it's 34 to nothing. Matson's going to be your fullback still. Uh... Peyton Tatum is going to be your quarterback. Brooks Herrera is going to be your halfback. And uh, Colton Ritchie is your other halfback. Chance Brashard splits out at receiver. Plants it to your receiver over here on the right-hand side. Ritchie goes in motion. And Matson right up the middle. Yeah. Good run there by Matson, but like Isaac said, I need, I need to cover that ball up a little bit more. Cameron Hilton. 
Paris and Salem's tied 26 to 26. That's in the third quarter. Looks like it's going to be the same formation for the Cats. One wide either side. Blanchett is the receiver on this side on second down and call it four. So and it's going to be Matson right up the middle again. Casey's still on his feet. He's going to be close. I think he's got the first down. It's going to be a first down for the Cats. Mason Gowers comes in for the Cats at tight end. Race Blentz is going to come out. So Gowers is going to be on the left-hand side. Chance for Shard still in that receiver on the left-hand side as well. Brooks Herrera and Colton Ritchie are still your halfbacks. Matson is your fullback. Ball's on the ground again, and it's going to be a fumble, and the Hornets are going to have the ball. That's going to be Ty Smith on the recovery. So 418 left to go in the third. It's 34 nothing. So Hackett will get the ball back and we'll go field the field again. Two receivers to each side. Looks like number four is going to be your quarterback. Cole Ketchum. Pistol formation for the Hornets. And Winter is going to get the ball right up the middle. And Shackelford on the stop finally, but he's going to have a first down. First and ten for the Hornets. Hackett's found a little bit of success, as I said, moving the ball at times. They haven't gotten in yet. So four or five left to go here in the third, and the Hornets are on the 13-yard line. And it's going to be a handoff again, and who was that? They both had the ball. Who was that? Brent Welling comes in. Manson on the stop, Wooldridge and Goers. It's going to be second and 13. 3.30 left to go here in the third. Two receivers to each side. Ketchum is going to be your quarterback. He rolls out to his right, and that's going to be incomplete. That wasn't even catchable, and we got a flag. Coach, go, or Coach Doc Crawley comes on the field. There was no way that was catchable. Randy Johnson couldn't have even caught that. No, and if you don't know who that is, he's what, 6'7 pitcher for the uh, Arizona Diamondbacks. Um, he has a point. I don't think anyone but Randy Johnson can catch that one. So that's going to be a first down, new set of downs. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Boy, yeah, Coach Doc Crowley is mad, and I don't blame him. And so it's going to be second and five, so it's not a new set of downs, so that's my bad. Uh, so it's going to be third, and looks probably about three. Another flag. He's going to get a flag. Coach Crowley is. Be a sideline warning, probably. That's the first one, so it's not really. No? Yeah, it is a it's a sideline warning, so that shouldn't do nothing, really. It's just a warning. The first one is a warning, right? So it shouldn't be no yardage mark off, unless they've already had one. Then why is he moving the ball? He put it back down with a little attitude, too. Third, third and three, balls on the eight-yard line. And it's going to be head off to Shipman on the left-hand side. And he's going to be stopped. Colton Ritchie and Jacob Herrera. Brett Welling comes in as well as the others. Wooldridge, Shackelford. That's going to be fourth down. Boy, I tell you what, Isaac. The Bearcat defense has come up big tonight in the red zone when we needed them to. Which I do know we still have one more down to go, but still, uh, got to brag on them. Got to brag on them. Yeah, they've been down there three times. 
This being the third time, stopped it two times. Two receivers to the job. left, one to the right. Shipman is to the right of Ketchum. Ketchum looking, and it's going to be intercepted. Jacob Pereira. That's a face mask. You go. You better go. Wish he would have just took a knee, but that's his fifth interception. I'm trying to think off the top of my head real quick. I'll, I'll look. Let's see how many interceptions Mr. Jacob Pereira has. That's his second interception in the end zone. Should be 15 yard face mask. Yep, face mask. Face mask, 15 yard variety against the Hornets. And it's going to go against the Hornets. That'll bring it out to be about the 18 yard line. Yeah, there's 46 seconds left to go between Osceola and Dollarway. Osceola is up 14 to nothing. So it looks like Osceola is more likely going to win. Um, the ball game between them and Darlaway. So the cats, the cats hold on here. Um, train horn. That sounded like it was on that truck, though. Peyton Tatum is your quarterback, and Matson is going to be a fullback right up the middle. Casey's still driving his legs. 33 come away with it, but that's not who's see number 33, Austin Colwell come up with it, but they're and still going to set. What are they going to do? Boomble keeps the ball, they say. So that was the fifth interception for Jacob Pereira, and that's the second one in the end zone. Well, it's gotten a little chippy here at Bearcat Stadium. It has gotten a little chippy, Chuck. I'll, I'll agree with Mr. Chuck on that. Got 132 left to go here in the third. It's 34 to nothing. And I think this is probably about the longest third quarter we've had all year. And a timeout. That's going to be the second timeout the Cats have used in the third quarter. So the Cats have one timeout left. The Hackett Hornets have two timeouts left. There's 126 left to go in the third. It is 34 to nothing. And we'll take a little break ourselves. For Isaac Brown, I'm Zach Austin. You're watching Bearcat Football. We are back here at Bearcat Stadium, right off G.J. George Drive. OCLA has kicked Osceola has kicked the field goal. They are up 17 to nothing, with 35 seconds left to go in the ball game. Um, so, unless something miraculous happens, Osceola is going to win that game, and they will play the winner of this game. Peyton Tatum is going to be your quarterback. Richie goes in motion. It's going to be Brooks Herrera getting the ball on the right hand side. Brooks cuts back on the inside. Has the first down. He's tackled by Elkins. Got 120 left to go in the third. Brooks Herrera is your halfback. Colton Ritchie is your other halfback. Casey Matson is your fullback. And Peyton Tatum is your quarterback. Chance Bouchard is your receiver. Your linemen are still the same. And it's going to be Richie in motion. Matson right up the middle with the ball. Still turning those legs. Looks like he had number 33 and 12. That's going to be Peyton Hester, number 33, Austin Cowell, and they're going to stop for the Hornets. 45 seconds left to go here in the third. I keep wanting to say the ball game. Well, that's a good return here by Dollarway. Uh, we've got it pulled up here. But 26 seconds left. In the Dollarway and Osceola game. Goers is going to be your tight end on the left-hand side. Richie goes in motion now. And snap, and somehow Richie has the ball. Spin. We've got a couple, about a swarm of the Hackett players. Winter in there and Hester. 
and uh, Shipman on the stop for the Hornets. So it's that's the final play of the third quarter. So at the end of three, Boonville Bearcats 34, Hackett Hornets 0. We'll take a little break. We'll be right back. You're watching Bearcat Football. And we are back here at Bearcat Stadium. Third and four from the 41 yard line. And it's going to be offsides against the Cats. Cats are going to back up five. Be third and nine. Start of the fourth quarter. Ooh, Caitlin Spain just switched it a nice one toward the press box. Didn't quite make it, but a good arm. Caitlin has forced one of our volleyball players to also. Looks like Frace Blancett comes into the game for the Cats. He's going to split out to the right-hand side. Richie goes in motion, and it's going to be throw to Brooks Herrera. And Brooks Herrera is up over the 35 to 30, 25, 20, 15, 10, touchdown, Bearcats. 64-yard pass from Peyton Tatum to Brooks Herrera, and it's going to be 40 to nothing with 11 to 48 left to go in the ball game. Man, I was not expecting that. Good pass by Peyton Tatum, just right over the defender's hands, and Brooks takes it. Looks like we're going to attempt the PAT, make it 41 to nothing. That does invoke the mercy rule. So via running clock the rest of the game. And the kick is up, and it's going to be good. So with 11.48 left to go here in the fourth quarter, your Bumble Bearcats, 41. The Hackett Hornets, zero. For Isaac Brown, I'm Zach Austin. You're watching Bearcat Football. We were back here at Bearcat Stadium. 11.48 left to go here in the ball game. 41-0 Cats over the Hornets. Here's Kent's kick. Back deep is Shipman, number two and number one, Elkins. He's going to get the ball about the, what was that, 18-yard line. And that's Tayton Ross holding on to him. That old boy, Tayton. And he's going to take him down. Boy, he didn't let go of him at all. Looks like Peyton Tatum is in on defense for the Cats. Like he's the only... Line, first and ten for the 
Richie's going to come out. Goers is coming out. Uh, Richie comes back on. Cade Smith and Richie are your outside linebackers. Waldridge and Matson are your middle linebackers. And it's going to be handoff to Winter right up the middle. And he lays a pop on Peyton Tatum, but he's able to hold on to him. Looks like Welling will stop as well. Second down and two, hack it in a hurry up. Two wide either side. Two receivers to each side. Catch him is going to be your quarterback. And pass over here to Hester, Jacob Herrera. And he's still on his feet. Good job by Hester. Had Richie and Woldridge over there. Got some jawing going on between the Hackett sideline and some of the Bearcats. Tommy Barnes was headed to the field and he was called back. Two receivers to the east side. Catch him, your quarterback. Hand off to Winter right up the middle. And it looks like Ross in there on the bottom and Woldridge. Here comes Mr. Johnny Barnes in for Cole Borsma. Same formation. Winners is to the left of Ketchum. High wobbly pass. And it was underthrown. And it's under. It was caught by Fisher. Wow. Shipman. Good catch there by Shipman. That ball was underthrown and a good job by Shipman coming back. To the ball, ball was well underthrown. And he was able to. He saw it before Herrera did. 9 15 left to go in the fourth. 41 0. Same formation for the Hornets. Catch him as your quarterback. And he's going to hand off to Winter right up the middle. And he's still on his feet. Good job there by Winter. Good hard run. Dragging a couple cats with him. Welling on the stop. Here comes Race Blancet and Tayton Ross. Tate Smith's going to come out. Colton Ritchie's hurrying off the field. And it's going to be a little swing pass over here to Hester. And good pop there by Race Blancet and Jacob Pereira coming in late with a good pop. Cody Elliott comes in to the game for the Cats. Here comes Wooldridge out of the game. 8.25 left to go here in the fourth. Paris is up 33-32 to over Salem. That's in a third. Same formation for the Hornets. Winter is to the left to catch him. He's going to get the ball right up the middle. Takes a cut to the left. Tate and Ross on the stop. Ball is on the nine-yard line. First and nine, so it's first and goal for the Hornets. 7.50 left to go in the ball game. Got some pressure coming from the outside. And Ketchum is able to evade the pressure. And Casey Matson with the tackle, and that's going to be a flag. And Isaac's saying it's going to be a block in the back. Holding a block. Nope, block in the back. Yep. So that's going to back them up. What? Ten? That'll take them back as ten yards. So be first and nineteen. Goal. Yep, so first and goal from the 19-yard line. 7.05 left to go in the fourth. It's 41-0 Cats over the Hornets. Salem and Paris in a tight game. Uh, that's being played over at Paris, 33-32. Same formation for the Hornets. Catch them looking, slant route, and Brooks Herrera. Oh, goodness. Number 12, Brooks Herrera almost had it and just tipped it. And good catch there by, uh, was that Hester? Peyton Hester? Number 12. The Hornets are going to go for two. So with 6.26 left to go in the ball game, it's 41 to 6. They haven't put the points up yet. Maybe wait to see what happens on this play. And it's going to be handoff to Winter right up the middle, and he's going to be stopped. Looks like who's the guy coming off the bottom? Barnes in there, Welling was in there, Cody Elliott. 
So we'll take a little break and be right back. You're watching Bearcat Football. We're back here at Bearcat Stadium. Got some scores for you. McGee's up 22 to 7 over Bismarck. Harrisburg and Jaceyville. Uh, Harrisburg is up 47 to 38, and Glen Rose is up 34 to 14 over uh, West Fork. Newport's up 41 to nothing over Corning. Uh, Boonville's former or own uh, Jesse Frost. We are back at Bearcat um, Stadium. He played back Newport back when he played here at Bearcats uh, for the Bearcats at Bearcat Stadium. Pickett and Camden and Harmony Grove is in a close game, 24 to 20. Pickett was up earlier. Um, Pickett was up pretty good earlier. Uh, back deep is going to be Rocky Ross, Trace Hall, and Chance Bouchard. He's got an onside kick, though. And, oh, goodness gracious. Hackett's going to get it. Johnny Barnes almost had it, and he kind of just got away from him down by his feet. I wasn't sure who fell on that for the Hornets. So 425 left to go in the fourth. Number three. Thank you, Chuck. That's number three. Aiden Nobles on the recovery for the uh, Hornets. He recovered a fumble earlier, too, I believe. Trace Hall is going to come in for the Cats. Uh, Jacob Pereira is going to come out. Foreman is up 34 to 15 over Magazine. Got a timeout by the Cats. That's going to be their last timeout of the game. 4.06 left to go. It's 41-6. to six. Cats over the Hornets. For Isaac Brown, I'm Zach Austin. You're watching Bearcat Football. And we are back here at Bearcat Stadium. Center Point is up 32 to 22 over Rosin. I believe that's been played at Rosin. Is it? Yep, that's been played at Rosin. It says it's in the third quarter. Poyan's up 48 to 26 over Dirks. Same formation for the Hornets that they've been doing. Deep pass, and it's complete. And that's going to be. Uh, Fisher Shipman, Trace Hall over there on the coverage for the Cats. Gavin Kent's going to come into the game for the Cats in at safety. 3.47 left to go in the fourth. Got some pressure. Oh, man, Race Blanchett could have had him. Got, and he may go in and touch... I don't know. He went to go signal a touchdown, but he didn't raise his hands all the way. I think he was short. Oh, we got a flag. A legal shift. I missed it. I wasn't paying attention, honestly. 24-6 Lincoln over Atkins. That's being played at Atkins. Same formation for the Hornets. Ketchum's going to be your quarterback. Winter is to the left of him. And he's looking. He's got some pressure from Blancet again. Good throw. And incomplete. Good job by Brooks Herrera again. Good job by Brooks Herrera on the coverage. He was looking for Peyton Hester again. 
So 2.30 left to go in the ball game. Here comes number 15 in for the game. That's going to be Skylar Shelton, and Chance Burchard is going to come out for the Cats. Let's see, number 76, that's going to be uh, Gage Burchard. Johnny Barnes is out there on the defensive line. He's going to be uh, the right defensive tackle. And Race Blanton again with the pressure from the outside, and he's wide open. Catch him. I'm, I'm sorry, not catch him. Catch him to Shipman, 27 yards. Yeah, he was wide open. That counts with 154. It's 41 to 12. Yeah, the scoreboard says 12-6. Cats over the Hornets. That's not the case. <laughs> Here's the snap. That's going to be a catch him on the keeper. And Tayton Rice just throws him down. Boy, he's come up big here late. So 125 left to go in the game. So the Cats are going to take on Osceola. This will be the third meeting between uh, the Osceola Seminoles and the Boomer Bearcats. Uh, first meeting was back in 2008, and uh, we, we won't talk about that, I guess. That was my, my junior year, Isaac's senior year. We come up a little short on that one. It was cold. It was very cold, very cold. And, uh, yeah, I think the water froze him before the game started. The band didn't even play. But anywho, that's, I guess, beside the point. Uh, they beat us on that one, and then we played them again at State in 2018 and beat them 35 to nothing. Um, let's see what I think they beat us 34-21 but anyways this will be the third meeting uh, back then they ran the wishbone then they ran shotgun with uh, Cam Turner I th believe he's over at uh, Rivercrest um, Coach Hook has left Osceola and I believe he's the head coach now at West Memphis um, that's where he's the head coach now Paris has scored, so it's 40-32 Paris over Salem right now. It still says it's in the third. Comes Jasper Franklin into the game. 47, Harrisburg, Jaceville 44. They've got a barn burner, and it's only the third quarter. Onside kick again, and it's going to be recovered. Who was that? Race Blancet. So 25 seconds left to go in the game, and that's going to be, that should be it. And so your final score is going to be your Boomville Bearcats, 41, Hackett Hornets, 0, or not 0, 12. Yeah, they scored. Yeah, yeah twice, especially the last one to do is wide open. Uh, looks like there's Brenda Dove out on the field, Tate Ross, Trace Hall, Race Blancet. And so I'll give you some end of the game stats real quick. So the Boomville Bearcats will be home next week. They'll be hosting the Osceola Seminoles. They are out of the 3A3 conference. So, uh, refresh it one more time. And, uh, all right. So, Hackett had 75 plays for 331 yards. Um, they had 29 minutes time of possession. 34 carries for 86 yards. 22 of 41 passing for 245 yards. Again, this is for Hackett. Uh, had two touchdowns and one interception. Had 19 first downs. Um, they were 4 of 17 for 23.5%. 3 of 10 on third down. They had 10 penalties for 77 yards and two punts. Um, the Cats had 41 plays for 408 yards. 17 minutes and 11 seconds time of possession. 38 carries for 336 yards. 2 of 3 passing for 72 yards. Um, had 3 turnovers. Uh, they had 1. Let's see. Had 21 first downs. Uh, 5 of 6 on third down. 1 of 1 uh, for 100% on fourth down. 
and 10 penalties for 98 yards. I think this is the most penalties we've had in the game and the opposing team as well. Um, some stats. No. Well, they wasn't. Um, yeah, I said it. It was bad. Anyways, uh, Ethan Slavens, your quarterback for Hackett, was 16 of 33 for 126 passing. Cole Ketchum came in later and was 6 of 8 for 119 yards, two touchdowns, and one interception. Uh, Winter was the leading rusher for 25 carries for 76 yards, and Slavens had 15. Uh, Fisher finished, or Fisher Shipman finished with 13 receptions for 171 yards and a touchdown, and Peyton Hester had six receptions for 67 yards. Uh, Elkins had five tackles, Shipman had four and a half, Winter had four, Hester had three and a half, and uh, Esperanza had two and a half, as well as Smith and Cowell. Give you some stats for the Cats. Peyton Tatum, 101 passing for 64 yards. Ray, 1 of 2 for 8 yards. Uh, Randon had 12 carries for 141 yards and 3 touchdowns. Colton Ritchie, 5 for 76 yards. Ethan Waldred, 7 carries for 54 yards and 2 touchdowns. Casey Manson had 5 for 32 yards. Brooks Herrera, 6 carries for 31 yards. And Peyton Tatum had 3 carries for 2 yards. Brooks Herrera, 1 reception for 64. And Jacob Herrera, one reception for eight yards. Um, Ethan Woldridge was the leading tackler for the Cats. He had eight and a half tackles. Casey Manson had seven. Jacob Herrera had six and an interception. That was his fifth interception of the year and his second one in the end zone. Ray finished with four tackles as well as Welling, and Chase Plumel and Ritchie both finished with three. Um, again, next week the Cats will face the Osceola Seminoles. Um, I would say that your offensive player of the game uh, has got to go to Ray. And uh, Manson and Woldridge on defense, and might as well throw in Jacob Herrera. Your whole defense, uh, they came up big when they needed to and um, stopped them, what was it, three, four times down in the red zone. So uh, I think it's a couple games now we've said the defense was the, uh, the whole defense was player of the games. Had a couple guys doing good on defense. Uh, Manson and Woldridge always doing, do good on defense as well. Uh, the whole defensive line, just the whole defense, uh, really good. Um, so for Isaac Brown, I'm Zach Austin. Uh, we'll see you next week, Lord willing. And uh, remember, as always, it's a great day.